Hey, what's up guys? Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To, and I've got an awesome episode for you guys today. By and large, a common theme I have noticed among those that ask questions on many of my YouTube videos since I have VMware vSphere in the home lab environment and I showcase running different solutions on top of vSphere, it seems like there are a lot of questions around vSphere networking. So this video is for you vSphere Networking, Home Lab Edition. What are some of the common concepts with VMware vSphere Networking, specifically with ESXi? How do you configure ESXi? How do you understand the virtual networking, the virtual port groups? And importantly, how do you wrap your mind around the networking with ESXi when you are running nested virtualization, nested instances of ESXi on top of ESXi? Well, stick around, guys. This episode is going to be a fundamental episode for those that want to delve into using VMware vSphere ESXi in the home lab and understanding the fundamental network concepts. Stick around. As you guys may already know, if you have any experience with VMware vSphere, it has a very powerful, robust networking stack that is included inside the hypervisor itself. vSphere, when you install it out of the box, contains many constructs readily available, already configured, such as your first virtual switch and your first virtual port group, along with the VM kernel IP address that is configured out of the ESXi installation. However, past these basic configurations that you get out of the box, how do you do things like tagging VLANs, connecting virtual machines to specific VLAN IDs that you may have in your home lab network? I wanna step you guys through some of the basics with the built-in virtual networking stack that is part of the VMware ESXi hypervisor. We're gonna start by looking at the physical layer. How do you view and take a look at the configuration for your physical network adapters in your ESXi host? As we get started, I want to give you guys a good overview of what is going on behind the scenes with the configuration on your ESXi host. I know this is where a lot of the confusion comes in with ones that are beginning to run VMware ESXi in their home lab environments or even delving into doing that in production environments. So what I have here is a pretty standard four node vSphere cluster. It is running VMware vSAN as the shared storage between the four hosts software defined storage and we have fairly simple networking that is going on between the hosts as well another thing to call out about this particular cluster is it is actually a nested vmware vsphere cluster so i have four virtual machines that are running vmware esxi in my physical vmware vsphere home lab environment but this makes it super easy to quickly spin up lab environments as I click on this first VMware ESXi host, I want to step you guys through a few things with the networking. First and foremost is, where do I find all of the information regarding the VMware ESXi networking? As I have clicked on the host, I'm going to click the Configure tab in the vSphere client. So as you notice, we have a networking section. The first thing I want to do is go down to the physical adapters for this particular ESXi host. The physical adapters show you the physical network controllers or physical network adapters that are actually uplinked to your environment. However, as this is a nested environment, these are actually virtual network adapters. But for the purposes of our walkthrough, just realize that there is no difference essentially from what we're looking at here than what we would see in a physical ESXi host. So we get a lot of good information. We get the speed of the network connection. We get the virtual switch that they are connected to as well, which we're going to describe in just a moment. This is a good place to start when you're starting to look at how is traffic getting in and out of my ESXi host. So this is a good place to just start with your layer one connections 
in your VMware ESXi hosts. Next, let's take a look at the virtual networking side of things. Looking at that default virtual switch, along with that first default port group and that management VM kernel IP address. Now we're going up to the virtual switches and we're going to put this together to see how those physical adapters work with the virtual switch side of things. As we look at our virtual switches, as you can see, this ESXi host is running what is called vSwitch 0 and it's a standard switch. vSwitch 0 is the default standard switch that comes out of the box when you install your host from an ISO image whether that's from a USB drive that you have mounted in a physical host or if you've mounted that ISO image to a virtual machine if you're installing your ESXi host in a nested configuration. This vSwitch 0 is the default virtual switch, once again, that gets installed. Also, what you will notice, VMware will install what is called the management network, and you will see this designation of a VM kernel port with an IP address. In your vSwitch 0, this is the default IP, either that you've pulled from DHCP or that you have configured manually. One thing I'm going to show you guys is in the direct console user interface, and I'm actually accessing this via SSH. However, this is the same interface that you get to when you are physically at the console of your ESXi host. So I'm going to log in here. I want to show you guys where you see this information when it comes to the direct console user interface. So if I go to configure management network, I can go to the network adapters. And once again, we see the VMNIC zero that corresponds to our physical adapter that we have here, VMNIC zero. This screen shows which physical network adapters are connected. The network adapters as well with the X by the adapter or device name shows you which adapters are designated for this management network. I only have an X by one of those adapters. And that is also detailed back in the virtual switches view. If you see here, when I click on the VMK0 VM kernel port, which is our IP address, we can see the nice little graphic that displays for us that shows we only have this single physical adapter. That all makes sense when we look at our vSphere client. So in exiting back out to the direct console user interface under the configure management network, let's navigate to the IPv4 configuration. Here we see that I have set the IP address using a static IPv4 address and I have set the address to 101 149.115. Now that lines up with what we see in the vSphere client. As we can see here, we've got VMK0, which is 10.1.149.115. And that matches what we see in the direct console user interface. So that all makes sense to us. So we're kind of getting the overall picture of how the physical networking connects into our ESXi host and how we can see that under the physical adapters section. But then also under the virtual switches, we have the default vSwitch 0, which has been created. And we see how this physical adapter is the physical adapter connection for this vSwitch 0 virtual network, as well as this VM kernel port that is designated with the IP address of dot .115. And all of that matches up from what we see in both locations. We also mentioned this in the outset. How do you create VLANs that you have in existence on your physical switch and have your VMware ESXi host understand those VLANs and be able to connect those virtual machines that you have running on that ESXi host to that physical network that you have running inside your home lab. Let's look at that. The next thing that we are going to look at is the virtual port group. The port group is a special network designation that allows you to essentially create separate networks on your virtual switch. So you can think of these as the VLANs that you can create on a physical switch. We can take a port group and we can assign a VLAN tag to that port group 
and then assign virtual machines to that specific port group. Now by default, you're going to notice with VMware vSphere, when you load up an ESXi server, you're going to notice that this first network is created by default, in addition to the management network. And that network is called VM network. Now currently I have no virtual machines assigned to this VM network, but if we edit the settings of the VM network, we can see that there is indeed no VLAN tag that's associated with this particular port group. Now you can, if you want to, assign a VLAN ID to the VM network. However, typically what most people do is they create a new port group with a specific VLAN assigned to that port group. Click the Add Networking button and you're going to select Virtual Machine Port Group for a standard switch. So we're going to click Next. We're going to select an existing standard switch, which is our vSwitch 0. We're going to click OK. We're going to click Next. And we can assign this port group a name. I am going to name this port group in conjunction with the VLAN that we're going to assign it. So I'm going to populate the VLAN ID. So we've got our VLAN ID assigned. We're going to click Next and then Finish. So at this point, we can assign this port group to a virtual machine. If we edit the settings of an existing virtual machine, we can navigate to the network adapter configuration. And you'll notice it's set currently to VM network. However, I'm going to click the down arrow and I'm going to choose the Browse button. When I choose Browse, now I have the ability to select Test Port Group VLAN 20. Now, as we can see, this virtual machine is connected to our new port group. We can click OK to apply those changes. Nested virtualization is a great tool in the home lab environment, especially if you are learning VMware ESXi, if you want to build up clusters, maybe you've only got a single physical server, but you want to get experience with a multi-host vSphere cluster running technologies like vSAN, playing around with VMware HA or VMware DRS. Well, you can certainly do that with nested virtualization. So it's a great learning tool, great for the home lab to be able to play around with various technologies, spin up clusters, tear them down, break them without any hesitation. Understanding the nested networking in your nested ESXi environment is key to being successful with using nested virtualization in the home lab. So let's dive into how you wrap your mind around the inception of the networking configuration with nested virtualization. And as I mentioned, nested virtualization is simply running your ESXi server host inside a virtual machine. So this entire vSphere environment, while it looks like a physical ESXi vSphere cluster, are actually running as virtual machines inside a physical vSphere cluster environment. So as you can see, I've got the four ESXi servers as well as my vCenter server host. So it gets to be a bit of a mind bender when you start thinking about nested networking. And I want to show you guys just a couple of concepts to wrap your head around when you are building out your nested virtual machine environments for ESXi. In working with your nested environment, one of the things I like to think of when I am trying to wrap my mind around the networking from a nested ESXi environment over to a physical vSphere infrastructure that you have these nested instances running upon is I like to think about it in terms of a network switch. And this really helps me to wrap my mind around how VLAN traffic will actually flow from the nested environment out to the physical ESXi hosts. I know many of you have worked with the Intel ProSet driver adapter where you can actually tag frames from within the operating system. However, you need those tagged VLAN frames, such as VLAN ID 20, to be acceptable to the uplink port or that trunk port that you have configured on your physical switch. In your nested environment, 
Think of these virtual machines and these port groups as actually configuring a VLAN inside that operating system uplinked to that trunk port. You're going to have to make sure that that trunk port accepts those frames. So in the physical environment, if you want that physical environment upstream port group to be able to accept those tagged frames, you're not going to be able to assign a specific VLAN ID. Rather, you're going to want to configure that as a VLAN trunk. And if you notice, it accepts tags 0 through 4094. So our nested environment will send the tagged frame or VLAN 20 or whatever tagged frame we are sending to that upstream port group. And that VLAN trunking designation will allow that physical ESXi host to be able to accept and pass along those tagged frames. Now, it goes without saying, you must have your physical uplinks from this physical ESXi host tagged with the appropriate VLAN or have those set in trunk mode where they accept all of the tagged frames as we see here. This can be a bit of a mind bender, but for me, when I think about it in terms of basic networking and network switches, where I am tagging frames inside of a host operating system, I need that upstream port to be able to understand those tagged frames. Well guys, I hope you've enjoyed this Networking Basics Home Lab Edition class with VMware vSphere Networking. Let me know in the comments if you like videos like this one that explores the fundamental concepts of building home lab environments. Networking is certainly one of those core essential fundamentals that you need to grasp in learning and moving forward with more complex configurations in your home lab environment. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. Please do like this video, subscribe to the channel. Keep on home labbing, guys. Keep on learning, break things, fix things, tear them down, build them back up. And I will see you guys on the next video.